I cannot take this anymore. It's too much for me to bear this. Tell me more. I have been stuck in this routine for way too long. And how does that make you feel? Hungry. Hmm. Hungry? Why? Seriously? I've been living between 3 a.m. and dawn. I barely manage breakfast, let alone lunch and dinner. Here, take my lunch. What are you still doing here? You're gonna be late, it's 3 a.m. Roll the intro. Hey, welcome back to the fourth and last episode of First Light Retrospect. And today, special guest, my daughter, Emma. Hi. <laughs> so, in this episode, we will be talking about the psychology of the film. Okay, so the ins and outs of the so psychology. So basically, you're going to drill into the movie's brain. Uh, yeah, kind of. Mostly into my brain. Don't actually do that. Okay, I won't. So, Wait, you're gonna, aren't you going to ruin the uh, video for the other people if that oh, didn't watch it? Ooh, you're absolutely right. Okay, so spoiler alert. Do I not watch this uh, video if you didn't watch the movie yet. Okay, so pause now. Okay, we will be here. We'll wait for you. <laughs> and come back when you watch the movie. Yeah. Oh, back so soon? They're back. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> if you recall, in the previous episode, we spoke about the beats. Now, beats form sequences. And this movie is made up of two sequences. The first sequence tackles the opening part. The second sequence handles the change. The opening and closing shots are very similar in setup. We've got the opening shot, which is more on the low key side. It shows the uneasiness and the closing shot is more on a high key white okay and it shows resolution each sequence is very similar in setup and each end with a flashback let's compare the sequences and see what the differences are if you look at these two shots you will see many similarities but there are differences both in the picture and in the tone of the narration. So if you take the first shot, you will see that the arm, the hand, the entire arm is filling up the entire uh, frame. Now, this shows an amount of certainty, the certainty that's coming in the sequence. So the character here knows what's going to happen and is knowledgeable of what will be happening during that part of the sequence. If you get the second shot from the second sequence, you will see that the hand is only filling part of the frame. And this is to portray the uncertainty, the, un the no no lack of knowledge of what's going to happen next. And now let's have a look at the symbols. So if you see the first shot, there is a photo of the wife. This shows nostalgia, a memory, something that happened in the past. If you look at the second shot, there is no photo there. That means that the memory didn't happen. So there was no memory that was needed. Now, let's have a look also at the time. It's, you know, it's 3 a.m. and the day begins. The first shot, it is exactly 3 a.m. So the minute hand is exactly on the 3 a.m. part. But if you look at the second shot, you notice that it's actually 2.59 a.m., so it's not exactly 3 a.m. And this is something that is also repeated at the very end of the movie. Some other differences you'll notice in the opening shots of the sequences is the differences in the narration. 
So in the first sequence, the narrator is speaking more in a third party, on a third party mode. He's telling a story. Okay, whilst if you look at the second sequence, it is first person. So he's talking about himself. It's 3 a.m. and my day begins again. Whereas in the first sequence, it is it's 3 a.m. and the day begins again. If you look at the part of the swings, in the first sequence, the character is walking through in a very assertive manner. Okay, so the swing is swinging, he doesn't notice it, and no one's really on the swing, and it stops suddenly, and he simply walks through as if it were a normal routine. However, in the second sequence, he starts questioning it, and for the first time ever, he actually looks back, and on the swing, he sees his daughter, Emma, who says... Daddy. Daddy! <laughs> exactly. The early shot is also very similar in setup. If you see the first one, let's look at the colors. The first one is very warm and uh, shows comfort of knowledge, comfort of uh, a routine. If you look at the second one, the color is totally different. It's very cold and also shot at an angle, at that shot, which gives you the uh, uneasiness, the uh, wanting to run, wanting to hurry up, because there is the change. The Bastion shots, again, very similar in color, in uh, setup. The main difference here is that in the first part, he does see his wife and she looks at him but says nothing. Okay, there's a disconnect. If you look at the second one, she actually speaks to him. She says, hey, so there's this connection. And that connection is continued forward as if when you see in the end shot, he's talking to her over the phone. Now let's look at the flashback scenes. If you see the first flashback, which is in high tone, it's um, high key, very high key white. This shows the part where the character receives the watch, the pocket watch, from his wife and his daughter. So don't forget that you've already been introduced to the wife and you see her portrait in the watch, okay? And the daughter, this would be the first time that you would be introduced to the daughter. And the pocket watch that is already tied in the first sequence. If you look at the flashback of the second sequence, this is the part where it all happened, the part that created this whole situation, and it's the actual car accident. One thing to note, and this is something I mentioned earlier, is the time on the dashboard, and it is 2.59 a.m. So that is the time when all of this had happened, hence the change. With all this knowledge, now let's go through the sequences, okay? There's the first shot, kind of you wake up, then there's the time, which is 3 a.m., walking through the swings, through the alley with confidence, and seeing his wife. This triggers the flashback of when he would have received the watch, okay? And this takes him back and goes to the second sequence when there is the change. We go through the second sequence, the time is 2.59 a.m. on the watch, and the wife is no longer there. Okay. Walking through the swings, he actually sees his daughter on the swing, something that he never saw before during the previous loops, let's say, of his life. There he panics because he's afraid that he's going to lose everything, this status quo of his uh, routine, of his cycle. And he starts running, he runs through the alley, just in time to find his wife who speaks to him and tells him and acknowledges him. She sees him. And that is when it goes back to when the accident happened and he wakes up. Okay. Now, this is an interesting part. He wakes up. From what? One thing I intended by this film is to allow for many interpretations. Okay. So, uh, I've heard many of them. I mean, what happened? Uh, he woke up from a dream. He woke up because he's dead, so in an afterlife. Or he woke up in hospital after a coma. There are many. So, 
my question to you is, how did you interpret it? Is it different from anything I mentioned? Leave a comment if you have a different interpretation. I'll find that very interesting to see. And we're at the end of this fourth and last episode of First Light Retrospect. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Yay! Bye! Keep at it. And capture the moment. <laughs> and hold this like this. Eric, look at me. No fingers to nose. <laughs> no fingers to each other's nose. That's disgusting. Kardashian. <laughs> Lane Kasha.